It is a dreary, yucky, rainy day. I just got the animals fed and I got my extremely muddy eggs for the day washed. So let's sit down and have a chat about something I think is very important to everyone's homestead. So much for watching this video today um, so yeah it is a yucky rainy day so I figured today would be the best day to come inside and talk to you about something that I think is extremely important and if you do not have one of these for your homestead I highly suggest that you make one today and get it posted um, so a little bit about my backstory uh, you guys know that I've been homesteading for a long time so something else that you probably don't know about me is that I was a pretty large chinchilla breeder for quite a few years, um, 18, 19 years, I think. And I got to the point where I had to get USDA certified, which meant that I had an inspector that would come out and, and look over our place on a regular basis. And one of the things that she suggested to me was to have something called an SOP, which is a standard operating procedure. Um, and actually she required it for my place. And so I did it and I hung it up and I didn't really think anything about it. But, you know, something that COVID taught us is we need to be prepared for anything, right? Um, so what a standard operating procedure is, is basically it is a write-up that you post somewhere very prominently um, in your building. So, and it's, it's, it's a, the daily operations of how to take care of your animals and it's written in extreme simplicity and with enough detail that any person can walk in off the street and having never seen your place before know how to take care of it and I didn't really see the point in it back then because you know I was there my husband was there my two children still lived at home my parents lived right down the road I mean there was a plethora of people who knew how to take care of my animals but, you know, when COVID hit, everybody was sick and nobody could be around anybody. And suddenly, you know, it was a game changer. And that was when I realized the absolute importance of having one of these prominently placed somewhere in your, in your barn or, you know, whatever is a central point of your place. So that in the event that, God forbid, we have another pandemic or if something were to happen, um, you could call anybody, any, anybody that you could think of and say, Hey, can you please go take care of my farm? Go in this room, look on this wall. Everything you need is right there. So I'm going to give you an example of what mine looks like. And of course yours will look nothing like mine. But the first thing that I did, because it's really important, not only that they know how to take care of your animals, but how many there are and where they are on your property. So what I did is came up with this simple chart and it just shows in relation to the barn where all of my animals are, which animals need to be fed so that someone can go over this list and say, okay, well I need to feed this animal and this animal and this animal and these down here and you know they're not going to miss anybody. And you can tell mine is not to scale, it's pretty basic, but it gives you the idea of where everybody is. Plus I have back chickens and front chickens and important for them to know the difference because they get fed differently because of the sheer number of animals. Um, so then I have a second one and it looks like this. And so what it does is it breaks down, for example, the backyard chickens. It says feed one scoop of turkey feed mixed with one scoop of layer pellet, pour both into a single blue bucket together and that's another thing is I have a different colored bucket for each animal, which depending on the animals that you have on your farm may not matter. I have sheep and sheep cannot have food that has copper in it. My cow feed has copper in it. And if you look at the two feeds side by side and you've never seen them before, you may not be able to tell which one is which. So that's another reason why I have a colored bucket for each animal. So it kind of helps make sure that Okay, if you pour the cow feed in the white bucket and you have the, you know, chicken feed in the, well, or let's say the, the, the sheep feed in the purple bucket, 
then once you have all your buckets poured out, there's not like, oh wait, which is which? Because then you go, okay, yeah, the purple bucket goes to this animal. So that's just how we do it on our farm. Um, so anyway, pour both in a single blue bucket together. Um, feeder is just inside the gate on the ground. Dump dirty water, refill with hose that's located at the rabbits if needed, collect eggs, and just take them home and keep them. So that's an example of how I do it. So I tell them where the feed is, what kind of feed it is, what color bucket it goes in. I tell them where the feeder is located in the animal enclosure, where the closest water is in the animal enclosure. And I do that for every single animal on my farm in detail. So that way, you know, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you can read and you know your colors, you can pretty much take care of my farm. And this is, um, this just hangs on the wall and it's laminated. It's actually wet and out of the rain, you know, so the person could actually take this with them, walk around the farm. When they get to the goats, they can read, okay, what do I do for the goats here? Um, what do I do for the rabbits? And so on and so forth. And, um, so this is, this is what I have. And then you can follow it along with this, which tells them exactly where to go so they can start, just work their way around the barn and they know exactly what they're doing with what colored bucket and how much and where everything is. So if you don't have something like this on your farm, even if you have a huge, you know, extended family like we do, I mean, there's six of us and the idea of, you know, having one of those six not be available just seemed ridiculous to me until COVID happened and now it's a completely different story. Um, so if you don't have one of these, then you really should. But let me show you where in the barn I have these. So this is how my feed room is laid out and every animal has its own bucket. And at the top of every bucket, it labels who it's for and how much that animal is supposed to get. So this is turkey food. It gets, um, the chickens also eat it. So you get one scoop for the chickens and a half a scoop for the turkeys uh, because we have much more chickens than turkeys. But the second thing I've done is right up here on the wall, this is where my feed checklist lives. So it's very easy to see when you first come in, it's right above the feed, right here. So whoever's feeding my animals won't miss it. And so as you can see, I even went so far as to label each of the individual buckets, not just with what animal feed is in them, but also a reminder of how many scoops. So, I mean, it's every step of the way. You know, if you, if you miss it on the sheet, you can see it right on the feed bucket as you're scooping it out. So it's kind of, you know, pretty foolproof. If anybody is actually trying, it's pretty foolproof. So I could go out of town tomorrow and call, you know, Jane Doe down the street and say, hey, I know you've never seen my farm, but can you go take care of it? And, you know, everything you need to know is right on the barn wall. And I can feel pretty confident that Miss Jane Doe could do what I needed to do. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Um, but as far as other things that we're doing on the farm, so it is now officially seed starting season for me here um, in coastal South Carolina. So I got my peppers started and my onions started and I will show you my grow room now and I will just tell you it is embarrassing because in the summer my grow room is the storage room because it also, I, I'm not gonna show you, but on the other side there's a bathroom. So you'll see like there's toilet paper there and stuff. Um, so it's kind of my storage in the off season and I haven't really taken a time to clean it all out yet. I'm just kind of cleaning a shelf as I need it. So it's kind of embarrassing, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. So here's my grow room. This is my grow room, which is a hot mess right now. It's mainly storage. Um, but I did start my peppers and my onions, which are right up here. So these are all of the peppers that I have started. And these are all of the onions that I have started. And there's multiple seeds per cell. So now we're just a waiting game till they pop up. But this room is perfect because it is inside of the barn and it is inside of a uh, metal storage building. So it's double insulated. It does have an exhaust fan if it gets too hot uh, later on in the summer when I start my fall seeds. 
And I also, excuse the open insulation, have a heater right down here on the floor that keeps this room above 75 degrees all of the time. I also have water right here on this garden hose so I can easily water all of my plants. And every single one of these shelves has a grow light above it. I just don't have them turned on yet. So by the end of, well, mid-March, all of these shelves will be completely full of plants all the way down. Um, so, oh, and all of my lights are on a timer right here. And that goes to a splitter here, which will work all of the lights in this whole room. So it works out great. So that's pretty much all that's been happening on the farm this week. We've got three sheep that are looking extremely close to delivering. They're um, bagging up. And the one bad thing, if you watched my video on, you know, sheep having tails, and I was so excited because all of my sheep have tails. Well, now I'm realizing the problem because with goats, they keep their tails up. So you can see their girly parts <laughs> very obviously. And the same with the cows is they usually are flicking their tails and you can pretty much see their parts. Sheep keep their tails tucked pretty much all the time unless they're pooping. So it's really, really hard to see what's going on back there. But from what I can tell from my peripheral vision around their tail, as I have a couple of girls that are getting pretty swollen and pretty red. So um, now these are going to be my first sheep born on the property, but we've had cows and we've had rabbits. Well, you don't really help with rabbits and we've had the goats. So I'm kind of using the research that I've done along with my experience with those animals. And so it's looking like we're pretty imminent on watch. I haven't seen any discharge yet. So when I see discharge, it's going to be game on. Um, but I've got at least three girls I'm watching. So unfortunately it looks like our buck hit at least three of my girls right away. Um, so we're kind of, is it a buck? Is a male sheep called a buck? No, it isn't. <laughs> it's called a ram. <laughs> my goodness. It's early. I've been up since five. <laughs> it's like 9am now. Um, my ram has hit all of the girls <laughs> pretty quickly. So, um, the bad news is we're definitely probably going to have sheep in February, but the good news is it's been really rainy here. So it's been kind of warm. I mean, I think our high, we had a high this week of 73 and, um, so assuming it's warm and raining, cause it seems like we're going to be having rain for like ever. Um, but so hopefully um, you know, if they, if they deliver in February, it won't be too cold and it'll be fine. So I will keep you guys updated on that. But I think other than that, that's pretty much all that we've had happening this week. Um, please, uh, subscribe if you haven't. I do shorts pretty much every day. Um, you know, just kind of fun things that happen around the farm. And I'm going to keep posting a video every Monday. So I hope that you will join me again next Monday for a chat and, um, I don't know what we're going to do next Monday, but hopefully it will be outside in the sunshine. So um, look for my shorts this week, and I hope to see you next Monday. And thanks for watching. Bye.